The Rockefeller record breakup was perhaps one of the most unforeseen occurrences in hip hop history. Or was it? How could a label helmed primarily by two legendary figures, Dame Dash and Jay Z, who started it from scratch along with Kareem Biggs Burke, come to an end? Was it money? Was it the fame? Was it the women? We're going to dive into what led to the downfall, separation, and ill will that seems to be harbored by former friends that built a dynasty. Let's start at the beginning. Before they were Rockefellers, they were street fellas. Jay-Z, Dame Dash, and Kareem Biggs Burke. Jay-Z, born in Brooklyn, New York, and raised in Marcy Projects, a housing project in Brooklyn's Bed-Stuy neighborhood, attended Ellie Whitney High School in Brooklyn. Jay-Z also had a brief stint at Trenton Central High School in Trenton, New Jersey. However, Jay-Z did not graduate and dropped out during his sophomore year. According to Jay-Z's lyrics and interviews, he was now selling crack cocaine and was shot at several times during that time period. He said that music has saved his life because at a time when one of his drug dealer friends was arrested, he said the only reason he wasn't there was because he was out making music. Dame Dash. Dame Dash, born in New York City and Harlem, had to learn how to grow up fast. Dame Dash lost his mother at the age of 15 due to an asthma attack. Dame Dash has spoken of the loss of his mother and said that his biggest fear was to lose his mother as she provided everything for him. After his mother's passing, Dame Dash put himself through boarding school by being a hustler in the streets of Harlem. He stated that he had more money than his teachers and drove better cars than them as a teenager. Dame Dash credits his hustle mentality to his mother. Dame Dash has stated that his mother would buy shoes, clothes, and the like at wholesale and sell them at retail. Dame Dash got out of the drug game as he states when Harlem drug lord Rich Porter got killed. He says that if Rich got killed, then it could happen to him as well. Dame moved on from drug dealing and launched a small business throwing parties and promoting clubs. This would lead him towards a career in music management and his first client was a rap group called Future Sound. Dame Dash, as manager, led Future Sound to sign a deal with Atlantic Records under a record of executive named Rodolfo Franklin, a aka DJ Clark Kent. Don't forget that name as we'll come back to it. DJ Clark Kent is pivotal in the Dame Dash and Jay-Z alliance. Kareem Biggs Burke, the third member of the Rockefeller trio that founded Rockefeller Records, was born in Harlem. During his party throne days, Dame Dash was in the crew called Best Out. Kareem Biggs Burke was in the crew with Dame Dash. It was in 1992 when Dame Dash, then managing music acts, Future Sound, and Original Flavor, was presented to a former Brooklyn drug dealer named Sean Carter aka Jay-Z by DJ Clark Kent, who knew Jay-Z since they were teenagers. Immediately, Dame Dash was awestruck by Jay-Z's talent and became his manager. Dame Dash handled all of the business-related concerns for his new act, Jay-Z. Dame Dash went all out for Jay-Z and brought him to several record labels, all closing their doors as they didn't see the young rapper as a valuable act. Due to the continuous rejection of Jay-Z by record labels, Dame Dash and Jay-Z decided to start their own record label. They approached Dame's friend, Kareem Biggs Burke with the idea of starting their own record label and he accepted and became the third founding member of Rockefeller Records. With Jay-Z as a talent, Dame Dash handling the business side and Biggs bringing the lifestyle to the table, they started their own label, Rockefeller Records. The exact origin of the name Rockefeller Records is highly debated. However, there are two prominent tales as to the name of the record label. Tale number one is that Rockefeller was named after an alleged Brooklyn-born hustler named Rockefeller. How true this is, we don't have the facts to prove it. But nearly a decade after the launch of Rockefeller Records, when Jay-Z and Nas were at odds on the mic on the song Ether Nas Spits, Rockefeller died of AIDS and that was the end of his chapter. And that's the guy y'all chose to name your company after? Tale of origin number two is that Rockefeller Records was named after the man considered by many to be the wealthiest American. American to ever live, John D. Rockefeller. The first project the trio released on the Rockefeller Records was Jay-Z's debut album, Reasonable Doubt. It was an independent release that got them a distribution deal with Priority Records shortly after the album's release. Reasonable Doubt was not a grandiose success in terms of record sales by any means. Released on June 25th, 1996, it sold 43,000 copies in its first week. Not a success at all considering the colossal numbers of other hip-hop artists and groups who released albums albums the same year, including Tupac's All Eyes On Me, which sold 560,000 copies in its first week, Nas's It Was Written, 270,000 copies in its first week, Snoop Dogg's The Godfather sold 470,000 copies in its first week. Though Reasonable Doubt was promoted with the release of four singles, none of them reached the top 40. The first single off the album, Dead Presidents, did not chart at all. The following single, Ain't No N***. 
featuring 17-year-old Foxy Brown, who is DJ Clarkin's cousin, was his highest charting single reaching number 50. The other two single releases, Can't Knock the Hustle and Filling It, did not peak higher than 70. In his first year, Reasonable Doubt sold a total of 420,000 records. It came 80,000 records short of being certified gold. This is a three-part series on the rise and fall of the Rockefeller dynasty. In the next post from Street Fellas to Rockefeller, we will see that things were just heating up for Rockefeller. Fame, money, and hip-hop dominance were just around the corner. We appreciate you watching the video, and if you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And as always, at Change The Game TV, we give you game so you can change the game. Now, go forth and change the game.